it requires reading. It's not passive, and it requires time, and you must be willing to give that time. It's not a, a, a video blip that happens in a millisecond. It's finding little abstract things or big abstract things and how are they used and you have to determine their meaning by their usage which in the within the painting and it's very similar to reading a book you know except in the fact that perhaps these abstract symbols or abstract gestures or pieces are something you've never encountered before my name is Joseph uh, Francis Zeman and most people call me Jay uh, I would categorize myself as a painter uh, in all meanings of the word. I have a house painting company. I uh, <clears throat> did that for many years. <clears throat> I was trained in England as a decorative painter, but most importantly on a personal level is uh, I'm a, a painter, a painter of uh, paintings. Prior to the caulking gun I was doing large pastels and um, again the idea was that you get a large pastel, you know, like that, that big, and until the pastel runs out, you can keep moving. The medium keeps going, and that's for me fascinating. With um, a caulking gun, which is a house painting tool, for quite a long period of time, you can keep a line moving. You can alternate between a lyrical line and a sort of, um, even though the line may be discontinuous, it does actually contain a movement that is continuous. Um, depending on the height and the distance from which you're painting, you can change the line, you can change how the line reacts to the surface it's being put on. <clears throat> and by line, I don't mean in terms of drawn line, um, because you can't draw with it really. It requires bigger body movements. Um, and then the farther away from the canvas you are, the bigger the movements can be. And then it just keeps moving, it just keeps going and going and going and you have to make decisions as the medium is the fluidity of the medium dictates. I like to play jazz. Very often when you solo, you become disappointed or elated depending on how you feel you soloed. And my best teacher said that um, you should not attach to either one of those. That the best solo is when you get out of the way. And that's kind of what happens when you really do, when you're really, a painting really happens and it really works is you've gotten out of your own way. You just, you don't even know how it happened. I would say that I've been working with this idea for well over 20 years, um, just because I think it's about human nature in a way. You can have a plan or you cannot have a plan. And if you don't have a plan and you just start to work, it's, it's patterns that your body knows, things that you've done before, but you try to just let it happen. You don't dictate it. You don't say, I'm going to put a shape here, I'm going to put a shape there. And then it's a reaction to what you've done. You know. And sometimes it's, I'm going to try to take care of certain quadrants, certain plastic areas of the canvas that I think are important, and then let accidents happen on top of that. And that's what my message is in a way. Is that it's, there's two things. There's an ambiguity. There's a, there's a, if you look, you'll see a pattern. And then as soon as you hook into a pattern in the painting or something that you think is a structure, it's gone. It's a, it's it's a, a type of dance in a way, you know, letting letting the hand, and especially in this particular painting because the, the painting is not there's a, there's a there's a subtle element of color, but it's really more about a, a graphic movement, and it's, it's a lyrical piece. It has a lot of beautiful lyrical movements, and yet it also has movements that have a tendency to um, interrupt those, and so it's not just that it has in it and it also some of these movements create spaces that um, allow you to enter and come out so it's not just surface it's not just line on the surface and I think this one works nicely in that there's a there's a the definitive underlayer of, uh, of the blue and the red and the orange and that becomes part of the upper layer with the smaller strokes that run through it and then the colors all sort of have a have an intermingling uh, the white gaps if you will if you want to refer to them as such were actually opaque paint has been applied back on top so what would have been red as space or or background or moving into becomes surface and texture so you have this this playing back and forth between the two when i see that a structure is very dominant 
too obvious. I try to push it back and and pull it forward, push it back, pull it forward in a way so that it, it becomes suggestive again and, and not overly obvious. It's a painting I did with um, acrylics and it has a lot of clear medium um, done with um, you know palette knives that are more more from the house painting industry than from the painting industry. Uh, I think it was a, a Charlie Parker solo that I was listening to when I painted it. Um, in fact, uh, I sold it recently and it was sold to a, uh, a prominent jazz baritone saxophonist in the New York City area, Claire Daly, and um, she was drawn to it immediately. So that was uh, nice to see that uh, from which it came, it went. This particular piece has more um, um, use of the oil bar, which is, is you know, it's a <coughs> excuse me, it's a painting medium, which allows the line to keep moving as long as you keep contact with the surface. Sure. You know, so it's a combination of brush stroke and drawing. The space, I guess you could say, the space in a way, or that which allows you to move through and out and back, is um, tends towards the yellow. You know, so it, it it can either be read as um, a golden light, or it can be read as um, yellow on the surface. Um, perhaps inspired by my perfect day, you know, sunset, sunrise, but it's not literal, that's for sure. What I really tried to do in this piece, which is very much, I think, what a lot of the great jazz soloists have done, is they try to be varied in the shapes that they use, the sounds they use, the timber, the color of the sound, um, parts of the horn, different ranges, and that's what I tried to do um, in terms of my strokes, uh, some lyrical, some jagged, some some tight, some loose, some spotty, um, but I think it really works. I, I'm I'm very um, attached to this piece. Um, I have uh, quite a few ideas that have not been run through to the full fruition as I see it. Um, the big next for me though is getting my work out there. Um, I've been very private about it, um, which is good because you get to explore on your own level. But I think it's time that people see my ideas and share in my ideas and see who I am as a painter.